Hello Aggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, uh, coming to you from uh, southwestern Colorado, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from, um, let's see, I'm not looking here to see his, uh, he goes by the name of Skip, Lawrence Barley, W9GWV. Okay, Skip, his question, which was originally sent to a different spot in ARRL and was forwarded to me. He says he's a little confused, been led to believe that we should use insulated wire for radials or counterpoise. I agree with that, by the way. That's my preference. Uh, do not bury the radials. I agree, otherwise you turn them into ground rods. Um, that will just ground that side of the antenna. This is what you want to do. Think of this as the other half of the dipole. True. But here I see the radials or counterpoise attached to the metal stake that supports the vertical antenna. Cleanly grounding the radial counterpoise system. I assume the vertical portion of the antenna is connected to the center conductor of the coax. Yes. But the radials counterpoise are connected to ground via the base stake. Doesn't this ground this half of the antenna and nullify the radial counterpoise? If it were at DC, that would be true, but we're not. We're at RF. Isn't this just grounding out the other half of the dipole? Wouldn't we be better off insulating everything? And uh, the answer to this is that DC, which we're used to thinking of, you know, like in battery connections and stuff like that, or even audio. Um, the thing is that it's much different from the way RF behaves. So let's take a look at a vertical antenna. This is going to be a standard ground-mounted base-fed uh, vertical antenna with radials, which uh, act as the counterpoise. The dictionary definition, by the way, counterpoise refers to the radials. Uh, actually, you can use other things as a counterpoise too, but we're using radials in this case. Now, radials are interesting beasts. They don't need to be of equal length. Um, they don't need to be absolutely perfectly straight held out. Uh, you can have as many as you want, although above uh, about 40 is the point of diminishing returns. You're not adding much of anything. Broadcast stations use like 160. Um, and of course, they're at lower frequencies. And the radials, I like insulated so that they can act as radials without getting hung up with the ground. So let's take a look at something here. Here's a vertical antenna. All right, and this is the ground right here. So that's the vertical, and that bottom of that's going to be connected to the center of the coax. Now here's a bunch of radials. Out here, okay, varying lengths. And I prefer insulated radials. Now, one of the reasons I do that is because these have an RF voltage that mirrors what's going up and down here. Okay, that mirrors it. So if it's open and an animal touches, or your kid touches it, uh, or your grandkids or something, there could be a shock involved, okay? So I, I like insulated radials. There are people, if you bury them up to two inches in the ground, they'll still act as radials. I don't know about that. I once uh, put up an antenna butternut and I put in 12 what I thought would be great radials. They were bare, copper, and I buried them about six inches. What I did, as it turns out, was not create a radial field, but rather I created a great ground. Okay, great ground for that antenna. And obviously that isn't what you need. You need radials that can be a counterpoise. Here we have these laid out on the ground. Now one thing that people will do, is they'll stretch it tightly. You put a lawn staple in place that holds that end down. Okay, and you hold it against the ground. In two or three seasons, the grass will go up around that. And you can actually mow right over them. Okay, now I don't have lawn here where we live. Our 
covenants require that we leave our landscaping natural. And Mother Nature is quite happy to oblige. I once did a, a little survey of maybe 20 feet and 20 square feet in, in under the trees and found like 12 different types of grass and just all kinds of stuff, not to mention the wildflowers and so on. Okay, now we've got a ground rod use a different color we've got a ground rod underneath all this which is optional but is best practice okay now what does that mean this point right here is at ground and your coax goes this way the center of the coax goes to this by the way this impedance at this point is about 30 ohms 30 ohms, okay? So um, if you calculate the SWR at this point, it will be about 1.6. And if you want to get better than that, you're going to have to put in some sort of a um, unun in here, to, in a transformer type unun to change the impedance. But most people just it's you know less than two so they just use the antenna tuner in their radio which works fine now at RF remember this is a one quarter wave so if this is at zero volts this is at its peak voltage if this is at its peak voltage this is at zero voltage that's because there's a wave a quarter of a wave on that thing right there okay so remember that this voltage this voltage are opposite each other now similarly you can ground this right here so that the center of these is ground but what's going to happen is when this goes up here the voltage on these will be down okay opposite so this thing the radio field acts like a uh, mirror for these and now because all the radials are sharing in this experience here okay all the radials are sharing in it um, each radial so let's suppose you have 10 radials and the current in here is 2 amps okay so what's the current going to be on each radio 0 0.2 so you can use thinner radials here. You don't, now this is usually an aluminum tube or something like that. It can carry quite a bit of current. You don't need real thick radials. I actually use number 12 AWG stranded THHN wire. And you can buy those on rolls down at Home Depot get like 500 feet for $50 or something like that, maybe 100 And you can use that roll for multiple antennas in the coming time, okay? Now, so what happens is this point right here is forced to be zero volts. Now, what happens with a a wave like this, okay? They're zero volts. Okay, so in the radial, you'll get current as you move away from the zero volt point, and the same up here. Now, this is really nice because over here at your station, you've got a lightning arrestor, one of these things, okay? And this is um, forced to be uh, zero volts right at the ground rod before it goes into the shack. So you've got ground, ground, so you've got a very nice uh, feed line going out there, and the radials work as intended. Now, if this were at DC volts, yeah, grounding that would force everything to zero. But it's not, it's at RF. It is a point that is at ground, give or take the efficiency of your ground. Okay? And this right here will do its thing 
and these things will reflect it. Now, I hope that helps, Lawrence. Um, think of DC as RF at zero hertz. Now, a ground-mounted vertical allows the RF reflection in the ground to serve as the other half of the antenna. It's unbalanced. You're running anywhere from 30 to around 30 ohms, around 30 ohms. So you're not going to get a perfect SWR unless you put a little ballon of your own design out there, and there's no real reason for it because you can do that in your radio. Lawrence, or I should say Skip, uh, I hope that answers your question there. Uh, yes, it is best practice uh, at the base of a vertical that you're going to keep all, at all permanently. Uh, you do put a ground rod in. Uh, I will warn you, if you move that antenna at some point, that ground rod is not going to come out of the ground. So you will have to find a way to keep pounding that down so it's uh, you know several inches at least below the surface of the ground so it doesn't interfere with future uh, lawn maintenance equipment and so on. If you want to remove the ground rod, uh, the way I've seen the Army do it is they get one of these old-fashioned tow trucks that picks up the front of a car and they use that because it can pull straight up. They use that to attach to the ground rod and pull the ground rod out. Uh, those ground rods are in there pretty solidly. Uh, in the Army stuff that I was looking at, they had an environmental requirement to not leave ground rods in the ground. They had to take them out when they were done, so they had this vehicle. So there you have it. Uh, I hope that helps to answer your question. Again, it comes down to the way electricity behaves at DC versus um, even utility currents and at RF. They behave very, very differently. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, don't forget that we have a live stream every Thursday evening. You can find out more by looking at that on the channel. And uh, if you subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications, you'll get notifications of the live streams. And you can watch those too. In our live streams, we just uh, trade uh, chatter with each other. But if somebody has a question, I'll try to answer it in real time. If I can, I make, make a note of it to do a video later. Okay, and don't forget we also sell a little thumb drive that has my 10 most popular videos. And you can use these for like club programs and things like that. Uh, and um, that's for use if, for example, in the building you use, you don't have good internet service. If you have good internet service, you can just show the video right off of YouTube. So, there you have it. Please hang on to uh, see our list of patrons and different ways that you can help support this channel financially. Until we next meet, 73.